Hello, welcome to Victory Church. I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church in Odessa, Texas. And today, January 29th of 2019, my wife Tracy and I are going to discuss with you a beautiful passage of the scripture in Genesis 30 from the verse 25 through the verse 43 is the lesson number 63 in our Bible time study. How are you doing, sweetheart? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing? I'm feeling great. Good. All right. <laughs> we are going to read the scripture in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, Genesis 30, verses 25 through 43. After Rachel gave birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, Send me on my way so I can go back to my own homeland. Give me my wives and children, for whom I have served you, and I will be on my way. You know how much work I've done for you. But Laban said to him, If I have found favor in your eyes, please stay. I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. He added, Name your wages and I will pay them. Jacob said to him, You know how I have worked for you, and how your livestock have fared under my care. The little you had before I came has increased greatly, and the Lord has blessed you wherever I have been. But now, when may I do something for my own household? What shall I give you, he asked. Don't give me anything, Jacob replied. But if you will do this one thing for me, I will go on tending your flocks and watching over them. Let me go through all your flocks today and remove from them every speckled or spotted sheep, every dark colored lamb, and every spotted or speckled goat. They will be my wages, and my honesty will testify for me in the future whenever you check on the wages you have paid me. Any goat that is not dark colored will be considered stolen. Agreed, said Laban. Let it be as you have said. That same day he removed all the male goats that were streaked or spotted, and all the speckled or spotted female goats, all that had white on them, and all the dark colored lambs, and he placed them in the care of his sons. Then he put a three-day journey between himself and Jacob, while Jacob continued to tend the rest of Laban's flocks. Jacob, however, took fresh cut branches from poplar almond and plain trees and made white stripes on them by peeling the bark and exposing the white inner wood of the branches. Then he placed the peeled branches in all the watering troughs so that they would be directly in front of the flocks when they came to drink. When the flocks were in heat and came to drink, they made it in front of the branches and they bore young that were streaked or speckled or spotted Jacob set apart the young of the flock by themselves, but made the rest face the streaked and dark colored animals that belonged to Laban. Thus he made separate flocks for himself, and he did not put them with Laban's animals. Whenever the stronger females were in heat, Jacob would place the branches in the troughs in front of the animals so they would mate near the branches. But if the animals were weak, he would not place them there. So the weak animals went to Laban and the strong ones to Jacob. In this way the man grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large flocks and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. <laughs> Very smart he was. <laughs> he did something good there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Friends, we have read in, in this uh, last uh, le lessons here in Genesis 28, 29, some things that Laban or Laban was doing to, to Jacob with uh, his own daughters. And earlier we read some other uh, passages where his character was showing so many flaws. Yeah, his character was definitely in question. In question, you are right. Because uh, there was something very obvious in this person. He was extremely materialistic. Very much so. Basically what he was looking for was stuff. <laughs> you know, that that was his, his character, his right. nature, is all that he cared for. 
You know, you probably work for a company, you work for somebody, and I want you to know that when you are working, you need to do your best, regardless. And you need to put your trust in the Lord, and that is exactly the title of this lesson. Do your best and trust in the Lord. You need to work hard, and you need to be faithful to your employer, regardless. Sometimes you have to work for for people that are uh, dishonest, they, they are liars, they, they cheat, and, and they, they just do a lot of bad things, uh, even hurting the, the company, hurting other employees, hurting the customers, etc. But what you need to do is you need to do your best. And with, trust the Lord. And trusting in the Lord. Whatever you have to do work-wise, you do it the best that you can. Because you, because you were hired to do a job regardless right. how the the employer is treating you right and you need to be found faithful in doing your job and you're going to be blessed when you're faithful and when we have many examples in the scripture one of this is precisely here you know you have to realize that some employers are evil some of them they they just care for for money right they they really don't care about the conditions of the employees if they have the the right gear or insurance and honestly um, it would be great for the employee to like their employer but bottom line they were not hired so that they would like their employer they were hired so that they could make money and provide for their family it doesn't matter so much that there's a great friendly relationship there, although mm -hmm. that's, that would be ideal and it's great when we have that, but you were hired so that you could earn money. Right, and, and it's understandable. It's a business relationship. However, you need to realize when is your time to take off. <laughs> and that is what Jacob said. He said, it's, it's my time to, to leave. And you need to realize that. When you are working for someone that is evil, it's just a matter of time. You are not going to be there for, for a long, long time. Although Jacob was there for a long, long time. But eventually <laughs> he took off. And that is what right. I'm trying to say to you. That if you are working for someone that is evil, it's just a matter of time. You won't be there forever. It's going to be a moment when you need to take off. Right. And the Lord will guide you in those right. steps. You know, in this particular reading, we found that uh, there was a deal that they made with the sheep. And it was mm -hmm. very smart from Jacob to do that, to put those things in front of the sheep. So <laughs> when they were mating, you know, right. it, it was an effect. And it's proof, the science proved that that, that uh, makes a, an effect in the genetic, genetic of animals. But the thing that you need to be aware of is this, that when you are doing the right thing in trusting in the Lord, he will give you ideas. And probably that is the mm. part that you need to take and invest some time in. Because, for, instance, for example, if you are upset, frustrated with your employer, if you are really disappointed with that job that you have right now, it's possible that you maybe are talking more about that about your frustration and not about your disappointment. Which makes you even more frustrated. You are investing a lot of time <laughs> talking about all those things with other people rather than investing time thinking what could be your next move. Because if you are really upset and frustrated with the company that you are working for, well, what if you start looking for other options? Right. Maybe there is an alternative there available for you. And perhaps, is it possible that you might be able to start your own business? You but, know? but even if even if none of that was possible, the very least someone can do is just to, instead of talking about all the negative and how much they dislike their employer, which, you know, as you talk and talk and more and more about frustrations, the more frustrated you become. You're stirring yourself up to getting more and more angry. And if you just stop the talking, mm -hmm. just that alone is going to bring a little bit more peace and not so much stress because you're not hearing yourself talking all the time about 
how bad it is. Well, especially when you are telling those things to your your spouse, probably, you know, because mm. it's just bringing the same story, you know. Over and over. I, I, imagine this. You have somebody that is going through something, and every time you get together, that person is telling you the same thing again and again. There is a moment, even with all the compassion and empathy that you could have to that right. person, that you are just like tired of And you know them. when they call, it's like, <laughs> here we go, I know exactly oh, what they're going to talk right. about. Right. So that, that is what uh, Tracy is saying. Sometimes it's better probably not to say much. However, if you have the opportunity to speak with someone that has a larger vision of business or careers, right. someone that could be a wise individual, perhaps a mentor in your life, maybe you should talk with this person. And in all case, I guarantee you this, if you pray, the Lord will guide you. The Lord will guide you to do your next move. All right. And you know what? If there is a time for some of you guys listening to this video today, that you need to take off because what you are doing this particular job, you are so frustrated, well, do something about it. Right. Because the Lord will guide you. Right. You know, Tracy and I, we have lived experiences with the employers that they were just mean. <laughs> they did not appreciate us. I mean, I'm talking about to the point that uh, being even uh, awful, uh, despising you, and uh, it's just not, uh, not, not a good atmosphere. Right. And, and you know, there is a moment when you need to recognize and say, mm, you know what? Probably, yeah, there comes a time where yeah. enough's enough, this is toxic, no. it's time for me to go. Right. I, I need to find another job because you know, you, you need to work. You have to enjoy what you do. Right. Because after all, you cannot do it only for money. You know right. that. So here's what I'm saying to you today. If you are really tired, if you know that this is the time for you to take off, pray, look for options, and maybe there you will find a right. solution. Because the blessings of the Lord will come to those who are the chosen people of God. Now the question is, are you one of those chosen from God? Are you a chosen one? How do you know if you are a chosen one? Well, you know it when you have peace in your heart right. and you have a relationship with the good Lord. The good Lord will bless everyone that comes to Him. Everyone. Now, you need to come to Him. You need to learn to pray. You need to come to read the Scripture every day and tell Him what are your concerns. Tell Him about your future. Tell Him about options. And you know what? Sometimes when we are reflecting about our jobs, the work that we do, eventually we will realize that we are more blessed than we can imagine. Because also there is another angle here, that maybe you are making probably a big deal out of a little thing that you can survive. That's true. So therefore, when you pray, the Lord will guide you. But regardless, Jacob was blessed because he was a chosen one. Right. We, and, he, and he trusted in the Lord. He trusted in the Lord. We are blessed because we are chosen people of God. Amen. Are you a chosen one? If you want to be absolutely sure, what if you say with me a prayer? And you say with me, Dear Lord. Dear Lord. I am sorry. I am sorry. I know that I have sinned. I know that I have sinned. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Lord. I open my heart. I open my heart. And give me salvation. And give me salvation. In Lord. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Friend, welcome to the family of God. Be part of a church. You need to learn to appreciate the power of being part of a church. Right. You will find in the fellowship with the new friends that you may have there, believers, so strength. much fun. Fun, strength, but yes, you become family and you get your strength from other believers. It is great because it's a constant encouragement. And if you are in Odessa, if you don't have a church, come to Victory Church. We invite you and uh, hopefully one of these days we will see you. Every Sunday we meet at 9.30 to have a little coffee and coffee donuts. Coffee and donuts. <laughs> and then later at 10 the service amen
uh, it lasts one hour. We sing songs to the Lord. We always receive God's word and God's blessing through the preaching and teaching. And after that, we go home. Some of us, we go out to have lunch together to different restaurants. Because so we are funny. family and we like to spend our, all of our time together. <laughs> and then Tuesdays, we meet at 6 p.m. We have dinner in the church. And then at 7, we have this very Bible study every week. So hopefully you will come to see us one day. And uh, we wish you a beautiful week. Amen. Ciao.